My name is Daniel Holtz from Apache Junction, Arizona. I come before you to stand behind you to tell you something I know nothing about. Admission is free, so pay at the door, pull up a chair, and sit on the floor. Early this morning, late last night, two dead men rose up to fight. Back to back they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot another. A stone-deaf sheriff heard the noise and came and killed those two dead boys. The mute psychotic shrieked in fright with words of joy at this ghastly sight. Now if you doubt this lie is true, ask the blind man, he saw it too. This was written by Oscar Williams in 1957 and places the actions of the police, prosecutors, and public defender involved in my son's case in stark relief. It also epitomizes the corruption in Arizona's criminal justice system. Our son suffers from mental disorders, learning disabilities, and an IQ level that has put him at a disadvantage most do not understand. Once he started his attempt at living on his own, he made a decision that his problems no longer needed the medication his doctors prescribed him. He exacerbated his situation even more by drinking alcohol in celebration of his 21st birthday. We can tell you in a hundred thousand words why our son is innocent of the crimes he was charged with, but that would be too easy. Instead, I will tell you about the corruption, misconduct, and even incompetence in Arizona's criminal justice system. How police, prosecutors, and appointed defense plagued our son's case with dishonesty, corruption, dirty dealing, and even criminal negligence. In his case, it did not matter if our son was guilty or innocent. He was an easy solution for a case that looked as if it were going to be difficult for everyone involved. As facts have been exposed, proving our son's innocent, innocence, it would not have been difficult for a fresh out of school defense attorney to defend our son. In this case, innocence was not only irrelevant, it was inconvenient. In his case, naively acting as a good Samaritan did not matter. A girl was kidnapped and a young boy witnessed it. What he told police did not matter to them. The abundance of evidence pointed to the fact that our son was not the kidnapper. Instead, he was an innocent young man who found a half-naked child on the side of the road abandoned by her kidnappers. None of this mattered to police. They saw an easy solution to finding a perpetrator to a heinous crime during their watch. Because our son's actions and behavior did not meet their standard of normal, they saw him as a quick solution to a difficult problem. All of these facts are indisputable. Our son's cell phone records prove his innocence. His story did not match how the girl was kidnapped. His physical attributes and description did not fit the kidnapper. The scent trail followed by police canines showed the girl was taken away in a car and shoe prints alleged to be the kidnappers did not match any shoes our son owned. Police had reliable evidence that the child was taken by two people. Physical exams of the little girl by doctors proved that the charges being leveled on our son were unfounded. Video surveillance tapes that could have shown our son's innocence were hidden and other evidence that could have exonerated his, him was hidden from the defender that should have asked for it. Interrogation video was edited and his defense attorney did not even question obvious missing segments. His defense attorney seemed to feel that by belittling, belittling our son, by calling him stupid and retarded, was more important than doing her job. She told him he was guilty and just needed to admit guilt to the court to keep from being convicted of multiple life sentences. She further attempted to use us, his parents, to coerce him into an admission of guilt. This must have left little time for her to do what she was required by law to do, defend our son's innocence. Because of our ignorance and financial situation, we had no way to find a be better defender for our son. Have we fallen so far that we accept this as our justice system? Have we stumbled from the road to greatness onto the road to perdition, where justice is meted out to only those with the ability to pay great sums of money for it? For the rest of those unfortunate souls that cannot afford it, is injustice the norm? Is corruption, perjury, deceit, evidence tampering, destruction or suppression, coercion, ineptness and laziness the new currency of the justice system? When will those in power be held accountable? When will justice be put back into the justice system? Must we wait until all is lost in the thicket of injustice, tyranny and oppression before action is taken? 
Is this the America we want to leave as a legacy to our children? What would you do if it was your son or daughter that sat in prison because of, corrupted, of a corrupted justice system? Please don't think that this could not happen to you because we felt the same way until it happened to us. We ask again, will you wait until your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife or your grandchild to be the next victim in justice such as this before you take action? Or will you take the reins and steer our justice system back into the road it was meant to be on?